का नमस्कार और सभी साथियों को मेरा ढेर सारा प्यार आशा करता हूं कि आप सभी स्वस्थ एवं सकुशल होंगे इन्हीं आशाओं के साथ मैं जगताप सिंह राठौर हमारे सत्यवती कॉलेज के इतिहास विभाग की सोसाइटी शाश्वत की ओर से आप सभी का इस वेबिनार में स्वागत करता हूँ जिसका विषय है पैराडॉक्स ऑफ क्रिकेट इन इंडिया कॉलोनियल हैंगओवर एज अ सिंबल ऑफ यूनिटी आज हम सभी के बीच हमारी प्राचार्य महोदया भी उपस्थित हैं जिनका शुभ नाम है डॉक्टर निर्मल जिंदल और मैं आपकी जानकारी वैसे तो हम सभी उनके परिचय से वंचित हैं नहीं लेकिन सभी की जानकारी हेतु यह बताना चाहूंगा कि प्राचार्य महोदया जी ने अपनी सारी डिग्रियां हमारे और आपके अपने दिल्ली विश्वविद्यालय से ही प्राप्त की है जिसमें कि एम और पी भी शामिल है इन्हीं के साथ साथ प्राचार्य महोदया ने कई सारी किताबें और लेख भी लिखे हैं और साथ ही साथ हमारी प्राचार्य महोदया कई सारी संस्थाओं जैसे कि द पीस रिसर्च सेंटर नेताजी सुभाष एकेडमी और जवाहरलाल नेहरू विश्वविद्यालय जैसे प्रतिष्ठित संस्थानों से भी जुड़ी हुई इसी संक्षिप्त परिचय के साथ मैं आदरणीय प्राचार्य महोदया जी से यह अनुरोध करना चाहूंगा कि वे यहाँ उपस्थित सभी छात्रों को अपने आशीर्वचन प्रदान करने की कृपा करें मैम प्लीज थैंक यू वेरी मच गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू डिस्टिंग स्पीकर फॉर टुडे डॉक्टर मले नीरव जी अवर टी आई सी डॉक्टर भुवन झा all dear colleagues and dear friends students i am to all to this very special webinar organized by shashwat history society of satyavati college uh, and uh, today we have a very distinguished speaker uh, dr malay nirav uh, who is uh, who will speak on a very unusual topic the paradox of cricket in india a colonial hangover as a symbol of unity um he though he is a professor of history in uh, stephens college uh, but uh, it seems that uh, we need to know the historical perspective on cricket uh, because the topic shows that uh, he is going to give a new perspective on the issue and i look forward to listen to him what he has to say and i'm sure that all the students are uh, you know, going to find it very interesting uh, and they are likely to have an alternate perspective on uh, this issue because cricket is one of uh, a very very uh, popular sports of india uh, so we need to know that how um, uh, this colonial hangover is a symbol of unity uh, i look forward to listen to you uh, dr uh, malay nero and thanks uh, dr bhuvan jha Uh, for organizing uh, this kind of event because you have been organizing very very interesting uh, you know, programs for the students uh, and these kind of pro- uh, students uh, these kind of programs are very uh, enlightening and uh, very insightful and uh, they develop the critical uh, perspectives among students um, so i congratulate you for organizing this event and also to invite me to address the students thank you very much wish you all the best for the program thank you बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आदरणीय प्राचार्य महोदया कि आपने हम सभी को अपने अनमोल वचनों से प्रेरित किया इसके लिए मैं सभी की ओर से आपके प्रति आभार प्रकट करता हूं अब इसी कार्यक्रम को आगे बढ़ाते हुए मैं साक्षी जी से यह अनुरोध करना चाहूंगा कि वे हमारे मुख्य अतिथि हम सभी को परिचित कराएं साक्षी जी Good morning, everyone. I am Sakshi. Dr. Mala Nirav has distinguished himself as an academician pursuing interdisciplinary studies in history, sociology, and psychology, as well as an ACE broadcaster and broadcast journalist specializing in health, environment, and sport. He has served as a consultant editor to the BBC World Service and continues to work as a senior analyst for several other media groups, including Prasar Bharat. G Media and Network 18 besides having published several papers in reputed journals as an alumnus of St Stephen's College Delhi and School of Oriental and African Studies University of London Dr Nirav has been invited by many universities abroad to deliver lectures including the University of Cambridge University of London and University of Wisconsin USA he has also delivered lectures on study skills for the students of London school of economics and political dr nirav has won many prestigious awards national and international bodies dr nirav has also worked as a consultant editor to the world bank and has edited several volumes 
dealing with the different environmental issues in India. Dr. Neil has been teaching history and mass communications at St. Stephen's College, University of Delhi, where he heads the department of history. While holding joint charge as a joint dean of students, welfare and media coordinator of the University of Delhi for nearly three years, he also served as the official spokesperson of Delhi University. As a senior sports journalist and analyst, Malan Irav has the distinction of many international events, including Olympics and World Cup, and his voice and style as a sports program producer of BBC are still remembered and cherished by his listeners all over the world. He has produced many documentaries and features for the BBC on health and environmental issues in India. And his radio feature on Indian population was selected as the best radio program by the World Population Council. Now, I would like to request my senior, Jay Rathor, to proceed the webinar. Thank you. This is not for us, but Dr. Malay Nirav Sir, today we are with all of us, with all of us, with all of us, with all of us, with all of us. That's why, without any time, I would like to teach our teacher, Dr. Bhuvan Kumar Jha Sir, to teach our teacher, to teach our teacher, to teach our teacher. Thank you, uh, Jai Pratap Rathor ji. Uh, thank you, Dhirendra. And thank you, our very respected principal, Professor Nirmal Jindal, for motivating the students. Uh, we have amongst us a very distinguished historian, columnist, commentator, analyst, wearing so many hats, uh, Dr. Malan Nira from St. Stephen's College. And it's a very unusual topic, as Professor Nirmal Jindal rightly pointed out. Because uh, we do watch history, we do uh, get very emotional uh, if we win or if we lose uh, cricket. And from very poor people to very rich people, everybody is glued to the television. And we can see the resurgence of India, the rising power of India in the world cricket. And if you look at the revenue that uh, India Indian cricket generates for ICC and now the IPL generates for the BCCI, is tremendous and uh, sponsorship uh, on television for cricketers and the way cricketers are now being paid and uh, even women cricket is now becoming a bit popular and so cricket affects every part of India's psyche and life. Or we look to Delhi University ke hostel me, Karimal College mein, Jubli Hall mein, dekhte te ki kis prakar se jab cricket match ho raha hota hai, test hai ya one day hai, to pura college ka aur hostel ka mahol hi alag hota hai. Ki sab log usi ki charcha kar rahe hai. Koi wicket gir gaya, yadi opposition ka koi wicket gir gaya, to pura college mein shor ho jata to hostel mein. Or yadi India ka koi wicket gir gaya, to pura silence, sanata chaya ho. Or Tendulkar ne yadi chakka maar diya, ya Kapil Dev ne maar diya, to मतलब पूरा का पूरा जो माहौल है वो क्रिकेट से इतना ज्यादा प्रभावित है और आप चाय वाले की दुकान में चले जाइए पहले कुछ ऐसे छोटे टेलीविजन भी आते थे बिल्कुल जैसे अभी मोबाइल का सेट होता है और पान के दुकान वाला उसको ऐसे दुकान के कोने में लगा करके अपना पान लगा रहा है लेकिन क्रिकेट को देख रहा है तो क्रिकेट का महत्व हमारे समसामयिक जीवन में इतना ज्यादा है कि कोई यदि नहीं भी देखता है क्रिकेट को यदि नहीं भी इंटरेस्ट है तो उसको ये पता रहता है कि अभी हम किससे मैच खेल रहे हैं क्या स्कोर चल रहा है तो क्रिकेट पर हम लोगों ने ऐतिहासिक दृष्टिकोण से चर्चा करने की सोची एंड नो बडी कुड बी बेटर देन प्रोफेसर मरी नीरव टू स्पीक ऑन दिस टॉपिक कि एक कोलोनियल सेटअप में यह गेम इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ ये हमारे बहुत प्राचीन परंपरा से नहीं आया हुआ है एक अंग्रेजों ने इसको यहाँ शुरू किया और और टेस्ट मैचेस शुरू हुए और एक कॉलोनियल हैंगओवर इन द सेंस कि ये अंग्रेजों के समय में इंट्रोड्यूस हुआ लेकिन आज के समय में देखें तो कटिंग अक्रॉस क्लास कास्ट कम्युनिटी लाइंस अर्बन रूरल तो सब सब जगह पे वो चलता रहता है मुझे याद है मैं साउथ कैंपस में था असिस्टेंट रजिस्ट्रार पोस्टेड और, और वर्ल्ड कप चल रहा था दो वाला तो मैं मैंने वो गीतांजलि एक जो हॉस्टल है वहां पे वार्डन को फोन किया कि मैं भी आकर के हॉस्टल में मैच देखूंगा क्योंकि वहां पर वो लगा हुआ था डीटीएच फिर उन्होंने प्रबंध किया कि हम लोग भी बैठ के देख सके अरावली हॉस्टल में तो 
क्रिकेट की महिमा अपरंपार है क्रिकेट क्रिकेट और क्रिकेटर्स इतने पॉपुलर होते हैं और आजकल देखिए कि कोई यदि ऐसा प्लेयर है जिससे कि हम बहुत ज्यादा एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं और वो आउट हो जाता है फिर पूरे शोक जैसा लगता है कि शोक या मातम का माहौल हो गया और तेंदुलकर का सोवा शतक बनने वाला था और सारे फॉर्मेट मिला करके और हर जगह तेंदुलकर ने एक बार बोला भी अपने इंटरव्यू में कि इतना ज्यादा प्रेशर पड़ गया था मुझ पर कि मैं जहां जाऊं होटल में जाऊं तो होटल वाले जो जो रिसेप्शन में वो भी पूछे कि आपका सोवा शतक कब लगेगा तो उससे बाहर निकलना बड़ा मुश्किल हो रहा है तो क्रिकेट के जो हीरोज है वो एक नेशनल आइकन्स बन जाते हैं तो बड़ा अच्छा विषय है और ये सबके इंटरेस्ट का है इतिहास के विद्यार्थी हो या इतिहास के विद्यार्थी न भी हो ये हर हिंदुस्तान का जो हर हर आदमी है किसी भी एज ग्रुप का है और ये ये जैसे ग्रैंड फादर से और ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रेन है ये उसके उसके डिस्टेंस को भी ब्रिज कर देता है हमें याद है कि अर्ली एटीज में जब टेलीविजन वगैरह उतने पॉपुलर नहीं थे और गाँव में हम लोग क्रिकेट सुनते थे तो पांच पांच दिन टेस्ट मैच और नया रेडियो में नया बैटरी लगा करके और यदि रेडियो कम है गांव में या सबके पास बैटरी नहीं है उतनी तो उस क्रिकेट के पास रेडियो के पास लोग ऐसे कान लगा करके सुनते रहते थे यदि कपिल देव ने छक्का मारा तो पूरे गांव को पता चल गया कि कपिल देव ने छक्का मारा तो इस तरह से क्रिकेट की महिमा है और आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट प्रोफेसर मले नीरम और आई वुड ऑल्सो थैंक यू सब्सिक्वेंटली आफ्टर द लेक्चर की इतने कम समय में हमारे लिए तैयार हो गए इतने इंटरेस्टिंग विषय पे थोड़ा सा पेचीदा भी है और उस पेज को ये रिजॉल्व भी करेंगे थैंक यू सर फॉर एग्रींग टू स्पीक टू द स्टूडेंट्स एंड टीचर्स ऑफ शास्वत एंड द कम्युनिटी हिस्ट्री कम्युनिटी इन जनरल थैंक यू सर आई वेलकम यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर द वेरी जेनरस इंट्रोडक्शन दैट यू हैव वेरी काइंडली गिवन टू एन ऑर्डिनरी one of you students of history and an analyst who tries to learn the tricks of the trade called cricket even at this age after having covered so much by god's grace honorable principal jindal my fellow students of history i also consider myself a student of history i haven't gathered enough courage to call myself a historian or a teacher of history yet and hence i prefer to call myself a student of history a student who has been tested about his knowledge of little bit of history and related to it what one sees in one's own life because history is best learned when you apply it to your own life that test has been given to me by my friend and colleague dr bhuvan jha now it is a very difficult test for me but i'll try and come up to his expectations and to your expectations in my presentation Oh, little hand off. Up to period for Keith Fletcher. Just three balls to go before lunch. He's on. That hand has caught by Salka. What an over from Chandra. That must be lunch. Well, it's gone up in there, and it should be a catch. And very easily and comfortably taken by substitute fieldsman Jayanti. Never in any trouble at all. And he's out. He's caught back and down. A fine catch. Alan Todd is out. Salka's done it again. David. Oh, middle hand off. Well. that was those were the clips from a commentary of one of the matches that india played against england which i describe as the high water mark of indian cricket i was a kid at that time 1971 
And with great difficulty, I used to lay my hands on the magazines which were bought my, by, by my parents and my aunt. And one of the magazines which used to come to our house at that time was called Dharm Yug. And on the front cover of Dharm Yug, I saw a huge picture of a gentleman with specks loaded with garlands. And that was something which I was not very aware of as to what exactly is this. And this was the photograph of the late Ajit Vadeka, the captain who had won us the first test in England against England, first test series. And this, these commentaries are from there. I just want you to take a look at the cover at the first slide that I have made for you, especially for you. Start with the picture on your extreme left. This is the first Indian team, 1911, that came into existence, all India team. Look at the man sitting there in the center. It was a game of the Maharajas. It was a game of the royals. It was a game of the princes. Because it was a game of the colonialists. Only the princes could match them. The commoners were included if they had great skills, but they were meant to sit on the floor in front of the Maharaja. It was their own way of showing their obeisance to the Maharajas. Now come to the next picture. Who doesn't know about these pictures? You have grown up seeing these pictures, haven't you? The great Indian subcontinental divide where cricket it starts the moment you see the team. It starts kind of uh, infusing a fresh sense of energy. You suddenly feel that your veins are getting hot. Why is it? Why is this happening? What is it? Now move to the next picture. This is a picture where you can't see me, but I was there. I was here in this bus, which was next to the bus where the cricketers were here. It was raining. The streets of Mumbai, 2007. The great, all time great MS Tony and his team, they had won the first T20 World Cup. And the tagline which won me the editorship of BBC Hindi at that time, the tagline, and I confess and I admit here, which gave me many things after 2007, which I said and was liked all over. And there used to be 35 million listeners. Most of them liked it and they reported back. And I had said, Sachin ki Mumbai mein dhoni dhoni ki gunj. That was the cricket, the unifier of this country. From the divider of the country, from the unifier of the country, to the divider of the country, to the unifier of the country. And how did it all happen? It started in 1909. Look at this. The ICC was known as the Imperial Cricket Conference. The Imperial Cricket Conference. Now you can understand why I chose colonial hangover as one of the phrases in my title. Then it came to be known as International Cricket Conference in 1965. And finally, it is the International Cricket Council that we know of. The reason why I thought that I would be introducing you to this, these pictures which I have chosen here as the title page of my presentation was simply because I wanted you to have a perspective of the talk that I have prepared for you. 
try and put yourself in one of these pictures and experience history of this unifier. Who said unifier? I said divider. No, no, you were wrong. Somebody is saying unifier. Somebody is saying binder. I have myself used later a word called the fevicol of the Indian society. But why? Is it not dangerous? We'll discover in my next 45 to 50 minutes of presentation. Well, it goes without saying that, as I said earlier, it was the legacy of the British Empire, a story which was created in the British Empire reached its colonies in Africa, in Asia, it also reached Australia. The first three members of the Imperial Cricket Conference were England, Australia, and South Africa. The first match which is recorded as having been played in, on the lands of India near the Kutch, Bay of Kutch, was played in 1721 when a group of sailors got together to play in Western India and three centuries later, three centuries later, just a sec, just a sec, hold on for a second, yeah. And three centuries later, it's not only the most important and most popular game, but also an unmatched unifier. And I'm saying it with all the consciousness at my command that arouses passion amongst people of all ages, caste, creed, and culture. There are many of the modern day historians who have written on modern history, and I'm not competent enough to comment on them. Bhuvan Jha is perhaps a better person to comment on the modern history. Many would say that cricket was one of the major foundation stones in the concept of nationhood that developed in India. Today, we are a cricketing nation, aren't we? And it played an important role in the freedom struggle. What did it? Yes, it did. I'm reminded that when Nehru was being criticized by Lohia every day and every morning and every evening, including in the floor of the house, for being a colonialist in the sense that he was a lover of cricket, the same Ram Manohar Lohia is said to have walked up to a panwal when a match was going on and very sheepishly went in and said, Are kya hai bhai? Right? Now, this was the legacy of the British Empire that we are going to talk about here in the beginning. Now, again, if you look at the title that I have chosen for this colonial royal and subaltern, the evolution of a cricketing nation. When I was growing as a child, I was told that the cricket that cricket in India was a game of the Mumbai Wallas. And the Delhi Wallas kept complaining that they don't allow us to enter the team. There were many who retired and who faded out into the history of the unknown. Excellent bowlers, excellent batsmen. They could not get a chance to enter. That was when I was a kid. When you were a kid, a man from Rachi became the captain of Indian team. And somebody whose father was driving an auto rickshaw who had migrated from Bihar is now in the queue to become the captain of the Indian team. So from colonial to royal, from royal to subaltern, the evolution of a cricketing nation. But how did it all happen? Was it a natural evolutionary process? No, it was not. In the summer of 1911, the Indian team was set up by the colonialists, not in the first instance, after several attempts had failed to have an Indian team because the colonial elites would not take it very lightly that something which was so English, so British, so civilized, so gentlemanly would be played by these natives whom we are ruling. Who are they? But there always existed some loyalists. 
The loyalists have survived so many people, including the dictators of the world. You know this as a student of history. And the imperialists, well, they said, no, sir, we are here to propagate your qualities. You're on civilizing mission. And cricket will civilize us. So they approached the natives, approached the colonial elites, and they made the Indian team not uh, uh, into, they turned it into a reality, which no longer remained the dean, team, dream team. And the Europeans in colonial India, they were looking for attracting teams from their homeland to the land of the treasured golden birds. And the idea of Indian cricket team was first floated in 1898 by another rising star. All of you know him, Ranjit Singh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Prince Charming, or Ranji, whose name is carried today in Ranji Trophy. Now, the colonialists also became a little mild. They wanted to show the importance of India the potential of India as a cricketing destination. And the Indian team played against Sussex Country County Cricket Club in 1911 for the first time. Right? Uh, just a second. The first team is formed. The Indian team in May 1911 on the eve of their departure to London is the, this is a picture that you can see on your screens. This is the Indian team in 1911. Now, what was it? Divide and rule, which was adopted in cricket or did cricket adapt to divide and rule? Was it a deliberate design of the British colonialists to have cricket in India with a divide and rule kind of a policy being implemented through cricket as one of the weapons of dividing and ruling? Or was it that cricket got an act to divide and rule? Why am I saying this? Let me explain this to you. The reality of Indian team was not turned into a reality because there were extremely fierce divisions between Hindus, Parsis, and Muslims over question of representation in the proposed team. Cricket was a reserve of the Parsis. And they thought the ground was slipping from under their feet if others were allowed to play in. And this was not limited only to the religions. It was also there for the upper caste Hindus who did not want the lower caste Hindus to become participants in the cricketing game. So attempts after attempts kept failing in 1907 to 1909. There was a series of wave of waves of revolutionary violence by young Indians who targeted British officials and local collaborators. The spark that led to the fire had already started showing itself on the land of India against the British rule. And there was a strong opposition to this spark. And they said that, well, fine, you do this. We won't allow free movement of the Indian youth to the English territory. Loyalists were extremely disturbed. Where would the Rajas, Maharajas and the big timers go? to show that they were different from the common Indian masses. They got very disturbed by the negative publicity which was generated by these acts. And the, the leading businessmen, leading public figures, prominent Indian princes, they all joined together. And then they pleaded before the empire, allow our team to go to London, play cricket, adopt cricket, it'll be better. And with this objective, the first tour of Great Britain, tour of Great Britain and Northern Ireland was organized 
which paved the way for the birth of an all Indian team, the picture of wit, which you just saw. Now look at this picture. 19 year old Maharaja Bhupinder Singh of Patiala, where more important than anything else was the first name in before Bhupinder, Maharaja. Maharaja was the newly thrown ruler of the most powerful state was sele selected to lead as a captain. Maharaja wanted to show that people had doubts about his capability, capability as a ruler. He wanted to show, no, he was quite capable and also to prove his loyalty. So rest of the team was selected and look at the basis on which the team was selected. Six Parsis, five Hindus, and three Muslims. This was how the team was selected. Now, class and caste barriers very soon started disintegrating. The most astonishing was that two Dalits from Mumbai, the Palwankar brothers, Balu, whose photograph you see here, and Shivaram, who overcame the res resistance of her caste Hindus, to become top, they became the top cricketers of their time. Now this man, mind you, was an untouchable. He belonged to the Chamar caste. He was not allowed to eat where others were eating. He used to carry his own thalis, his own glass. But the caste barriers were on way to disintegration. And this was the this was the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 new, the, the new birth of a new kind of... Now look what happens now. How the disintegrating model of the society is presented here is more interesting for you as a student of history. The Parsis were anxious about their own decline as the Hindus and Muslims became more competitive on the pitch and elsewhere. Right? Then, what were the Muslims doing? The North Indian Muslims cricket for them came to embody relationship with the political order that they established with the British rule. Cricket was one of the integral features of their education system, which was taking a new shape with the Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College being established by Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan to promote Western learning within the community. For the Hindus, the inclusion of Dalits questioned the very basis of inequality practiced by the upper caste Hindus. Cricket proved to be a new weapon against injustice and discrimination. So cricket was a revolutionizing tool. It led to disintegrations in the society. It continues to do so. When some mindless chap writes something on the Twitter about one of the best bowlers that this country has ever produced. None other than the captain of India has the guts to not only denounce it, but to come and stand strongly in defense of that bowler. That is how cricket integrates. It doesn't disintegrate. Mind you, my friends, you are the mantle bearers of the society. You have to keep this in mind. And then this cricket will continue to be the unifier. And let me say it with all humility at my command and all the knowledge where I don't profess the same expertise as my friends from modern India, that cricket, the unifier, began as a divider. जोड़ने के लिए नहीं, लेकिन ये देश था जिसने क्रिकेट को बदल दिया, जिसने क्रिकेट को फेविकॉल में बदल दिया। The divisive beginnings had communal overtones. I've just explained to you. It was one of the tools to implement the divide and rule policy of the British. The early 20th century British and the Parsis started playing bilateral cricket annually. Soon there was a Hindu team, there was a Muslim team, and there started a tournament which was known as Bombay Quadrangular Tournament. 1937 onwards, a fifth team was added. This had all those like Jews, Buddhists, Syrian Christians, Sinhalese, 
again built on communal and racial lines with followers trying to assert their religious and racial superiority. Things have not changed much in the minds of those who do not want to get rid of their dogmas. You heard Vapar Yunus saying what he said in his tweet when India lost to Pakistan in 2021 T20 World Cup. What a sad statement coming from Vakar Yunis, a man who is regarded as one of the best bowlers of the world. He made that statement. I don't want to repeat it because it would be very demeaning. But he was more happy about his team winning and offering prayers amongst people who were from a different land practicing different religion. But cricket will survive. The divisive tendencies will disappear. This is my firm belief. Now, caste and untouchability, as I said, had also its role. Palu Bhalwankar was a Dalit. Untouchability was practiced against him. He was not allowed to eat together. There were all kinds of restrictions which were imposed on him. Now, the strategy of the British boomerang, cricket emerged as a uniting force for bringing the ruler and rule together. And, and here, the tool was cricket. The tool was cricket, which brought the rulers and the rule together. A Parsi admirer of British governor of Bombay between 1890 and 1895, he convinced him that the best thing to do was to start a quadrangular tournament. Nonetheless, sown into this segmentary system was a series of social conflict is what Ram Chandra Guha said in 1998 in his article. In colonial India, cricket served also to divide the ruler and the ruled. And how? I will show you in a minute. Balu's younger brother, Vittal, led the side. He was carried on the upper caste team met shoulders when he led the team into victory against the Muslims in 1923. That is one side of the story. There were also reports of both Muslims and Hindus joining the victory celebrations of each other. That is the second side of the story. And there was so much opposition, the design. While Gandhi was fasting against separate electorates, the people who were fiddling with the bat and the ball were forcing the British to think of calling off the tournament. And this pentangular, quadrangular tournament, pentangular later, was called off for good in 1946. The country was preparing itself for freedom. Now, take, let's take a quick look at this time, as these timelines, from incubation to transition. 1721, I told you, British sailors played cricket off the coast of Kutch, the first recorded cricket match. First cricket match took place between the British Army and the British settlers in 1751. 1792, the second oldest cricket club in the world was established in Calcutta, now Kolkata. 19, 1848, the Parsi's first Indian civilian community to, was to catch cricket fever by by settling up the Oriental, setting up the Oriental Cricket Club in Mumbai, soon followed by Hindus and other communities. 1911, All India team visits England. 1928, the BCCI established. Come on, all of you know BCCI, don't you? When BCCI was asked to introduce RTI, it said, we are a private organization. The Indian team is not the team of BCCI. It is the Indian, it is the team of, it is not the Indian team, it is the team of BCCI. Well, there was so much of you and cry, they got a taste of what it would be if they wanted to call it the BCCI team. And Sachin Tendulkar and the likes gave the reply by kissing the flag on their helmets time and again. This was established in 1928. 1932, India becomes a test playing nation. CK Naidu is a captain. And this is the Indian team led by Maharaja of Vijayanagaram during 1936 to Arafing land. And the man you see starting tall uh, from fourth from left, one, two, three, four. Do you see anybody resembling him in the team 1983, which won the World Cup? This is Lala Amarnath, the man who paid for the British and who was the first captain 
of the Free India team, 1947 onwards. I, while I was coming to talk to you yesterday, because Bhuvan Jha's test was very difficult to pass for me. So I thought I might as well. I have, I have spoken to his wife, his sons. They're all my friends, Jimmy Amarnath, Rajinder Amarnath. I got caught hold of Rajinder Amarnath yesterday. And I said, look, my students, my dear students of history and my friends would like to know firsthand from you reminiscences about Lalaji, about Lala Amarnath. The man who played for India, that was British India, the man who captained the India, which was independent India, the man who was a chief selector and later an expert commentator on radio, so casual in his outlook, so relaxed as a commentator. Once I was talking to one of the biggest commentators that the world has ever produced. And he told me that Lala Amarnath was one of his kind. Now, please listen to Rajinder Manath here, his son. What did he have to say about how cricket was transforming? Indians who were playing uh, the club or they were playing for the Maharaja's team or they were playing as guests, there was always a feeling uh, uh, with the general uh, players who came from a humble background, so did my father, yes. that cricket was basically the game for the royalty or the British. Since they could not put up the 11 royalties in one team, or they could not have the good British uh, soldiers stationed in India to raise a team, they had to somehow rely on the local cricketers. But local cricketers, they knew they were not at par as far as respect was concerned with the British or with the royalty. So somehow they had to submit to the uh, royalty as well as the British in terms of uh, respect. Even as a cricketer, they would have been far greater in their skills. But they never got their due till 1946, except all those who played for All India team. Now, a brief look at the timelines in the same series that I was showing you earlier, from incubation to transition. 1947, cricket as a nation's game started. The Cricketing Nations foundations were laid in the colonial times, but the Cricketing Nation that we see today, the first bricks were laid by Lala Amarnath and his team. The first of these against Australia was a symbol of India's independence, though ending up in a disaster. All of you know about Don Bradman. His team was pitched against Lala Amarnath's team. They warned him, don't come in front of us, play on the covers. Lala said, we Indians know how to win. And we don't mind because eventually we shall win. I remembered Lala's words when Saurav Gamli made Steve Waugh wait for Pavilion. It was not one of the most decent things to happen. But as an Indian, I was very, I was feeling so elated that look, India has come it has come to a stage where the Indians don't easily get cowed down in the same tradition in which Lala Amarnath's team was not going to get cowed down by Badman's Australian team. 1952, India's first ever test victory was recorded in Chennai. This was the test team in, against England in 1952. This is the picture of the test team. Can you all see this? If somebody can tell me if everything's visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is okay, visible. Good. good, good. Thank you. Now, then cricket as a nation's game, the unifier undergoes class transformation. A middle class Punjabi from Lahore, Lala Amarnath, who had often undermined colonial administrators the wrong way. What was you know, and this you will hear from his son Rajinder 
of an earth in a, in a minute. By hitting the ball as hard as possible, he becomes the captain of the first independent Indian team. उन्होंने हमेशा यही सोचा है कि देश मेरा अंग्रेजों से ज्यादा ऊंचा है इसे अगर मेरा देश इतना महान नहीं होता तो ये अंग्रेज हिंदुस्तान नहीं आते यहां कुछ लेने के लिए आए थे हमसे और कुछ कारणवश हम उनके गुलाम बन गए कुछ भी रीजंस हो सकते हैं इतिहास आप जानते हैं हम भी जानते हैं उस पे बेहतर रोशनी डाल सकता है लेकिन एक का जज्बा हमेशा रहता था कि कब वो दिन आएगा जब हमारे हाथ में हमारे देश का झंडा होगा कि गुलामी का जो एक हमारे सर पे ताज डाला हुआ है ये कब खत्म होगा ये शुरू से उनके दिमाग में रहता था और वो जानते थे क्योंकि तो जब वो पैदा हुए उसके बाद अगर 1920s में आप जाएं हिस्ट्री में क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट का जब शुरू हुआ था और बाकी चीजें जब शुरू हुई तो वो तब युवा अवस्था में थे तो बहुत सारा उसका जो असर है उनके दिमाग पे रहा चाहे वो कहते थे कि मैं उस तरह से देशभक्ति नहीं कर सकता था लेकिन मेरा तरीका दूसरा था कि अगर अंग्रेजों को हम ग्राउंड पे हरा देते हैं तो एक तरह से हमारी ये जीत है भारत की देश की जीत है उन्होंने हमेशा यही सोचा है कि देश मेरा अंग्रेजों जब उन्होंने सेंचुरी में बनाई थी तब भी यह सोच के बनाई थी कि मैं अंग्रेजों के खिलाफ कुछ ऐसा करके दिखाऊं कि अंग्रेजों को भी लगे कि हमारे सामने जो खड़ा है वो हमसे कम नहीं है हमसे ज्यादा ही तो लाला टू ग्रेट प्राइड एंड प्लेजर इन रबिंग देम ऑन द रॉन्ग साइड इवन वेन ही वॉज नॉट द कैप्टन ऑफ फ्री इंडिया नाउ इन कंट्रास्ट इंडियन कैप्टन बिफोर नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन were from aristocratic families were mostly chosen for their capacity to be the patrons of the game and loyalists rather than being skilled players exclusive preserve the colonial elite hence is now the national passion for the former for the formerly colonized the unifier undergoes a socio political transformation this is how cricket is now changing its I remember after the matches been played at karnal singh stadium or uh, some matches been played at kurosha kotla ground or there were times when there used to be trial matches at uh, roshanara ground all the cricketers no matter who they were they were hindus they were sikhs uh, they were christians uh, they were parsis religion never mattered to him what mattered to him was cricket and he felt cricket made you a better better person in terms of uh, uniting uh, the team whether it was the state team or the country he always felt that when people come and watch cricket they don't come and watch a particular player from a particular relig- religious background they come and watch cricket as a team or as a national team and there he felt as a chairman that when he would select a team he went with an open mind if the player was good no matter whether he came from south east west north wherever he came from whether he was a christian parsi muslim hindu he said it, it never came to my mind that i am looking at a person through a lens of religion i am looking at a player who has a quality who has a skill to represent the country and if uh, and he thought he always thought that cricket if you put together the 11 players they may be from different background or from different uh, religious uh, background also but once you enter that dressing room of india you are representing a country and it's a binding factor people come and watch indian team people as he always thought as a chairman that i select an indian team and when the press reports the match they report the team as indian team and not as individual players now let's talk about post independence india cricket 
as a symbol of national unity. I don't need to say much about it. I just want to just highlight a few things. Vijay Hajari and Vijay Merchant were the two of the biggest names. And suddenly this man appears, Mushtaq Ali, in the very first test, in the very first innings, he makes a century. And we have a 2020 national tournament in the name of this great figure today, Mushtaq Ali. And as I was growing, I realized the language of cricket started emerging as the only pan-Indian language. It broke all linguistic barriers. The language of cricket, everybody understands. Everybody you started understanding wicket election clean bold I remember there was this Benny Bedi benefit match, and my mother, who had only heard about cricket as a game, it was played in Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium where Kirti Azad hit a six which went right up to the moon. I'd gone off to sleep because I thought India was not going to win or, or one of the teams was not going to win. And my mom wakes me up and says, Utho, utho, jeet rahi hai, jeet rahi hai, utho, dekho, jeet rahi hai. Or, and my, my mother was undergoing dialysis here and he, she would ask me, Bita, wo kya hua? Sachin, uh, the retirement le liya. Now, and, and, the nurses, one of them was a Keralite. One night I had called her and they would be discussing cricket without knowing each other's language. And my mother would use the colloquial Bhojpuri to describe how bitterly century Now, that was the time where we saw post-independence India and there the role of the radio is one thing which cannot be forgotten. I remember there was one match, I can't, uh, I don't have the, the uh, recording of that commentary, but I remember there was this man, Ravi Chatur Radio or Sushil Doshi, one of the two. I, I, I'm getting confused at this point of time. I know both of them. They said, Jisko, Jisko, Hriday Rog Hai, Apna Commentary Radio Band Kar Dijiye. Now, I told you, Ram Manohar Lohia walking up to a Panwala and saying, Arey, what is the score? Tell me, tell me. They are also watching, some Congress will see, some other people will say, you are not going to be able to do it, and you are asking yourself, what is the score? So, this favorite pastime that emerged in the form of cricket was to a lot, large, large extent doing of Akashvani, All India Radio. Just as the England captain went, so now John Snow. He's hit it away officially, and it could be out. He's caught. Underwood is caught by Mancad. A nice running catch. He had about 10 yards, 15 yards to run in. So the English overall lead, 172. Chandrasekhar comes into price. And he's out LBW. Oh! Little hand off. So that was Chandrasekhar's magical spell. Six wickets, 1971. Najit Vadikar, Sunil Gavaskar, the lips are this high. Bhagwat Chandrasekhar, the man with the bent arm. He caused such a havoc that people, I, Tony Gregg told me once, we were doing a commentary together, he told me that, you know, the cricket textbook writers had to redefine Googly after seeing Chandra. So India, from a colony where people were begging to play and were not being allowed, now produces world-class cricketers. So... The journey in the independent India that cricket or cricketers had, just have a quick look at these dates. I have to rush through. I have got only about 15 minutes because Bhuvanji, we started at about 11.52, right? So I, I think I still have about 10 minutes or so. So, so you can take more time. Okay. 
And we are planning <laughs> no, very no. <laughs> no, no, I would like to leave some time for question answers also towards the end, right? So uh, 1971, first test series victory in England over England. Uh, it was a high water mark. I have chosen this myself, a high water mark. You know, the investment that was made in cricket, you know, it gave you the same feeling when the mutual fund reports that you had a major profit this year, which will not be taxed. Hope the budget and the finance minister tomorrow keeps that in mind because the poor investors like Wu and me, if at all we put some money in the mutual, we want to see that high watermark, which cricket saw in India in 1971. 1972-73 was a man when the was the, was the time when the little master, the original little master, the man who played without a helmet, the man uh, in whose name a song uh, was formed, made, sung. People danced on it in West Indies. There was a little man called Gavaskar. He, in fact, scripted. He scripted the victory of India, the double century that he made as an opener, right? 70 to 73, Indian Test cricket undergoes a major transformation. And here are the moments for you. The first test series. Times of India. Look at the headlines here. India's finest hour. This is the cover page of the Times of India. Now, cricket in the 1980s came to acquire a strong national character. 1982, the Asian Games was brought, it brought color TV to India, color television. I was in college at that time, in the same college from where I'm speaking, the same hallowed precincts of my alma mater, St. Stephen's College. The first color television I ever saw was here when it was installed in our junior combination room, the JCR. And 1983 was a World Cup, a new kind of bonding between the viewers and the players emerged. The players were seen as the representatives of the nation. You have seen these representatives of the nation being filmed in the 1983, which has just been made. Starting with Kapil Deo, Mohinder Manat, Madan Lal, you know, all these greats. Unexpected, Sayyid Kirwani, unexpected victory from India, for India against the West Indies. I can never forget that sight of Malcolm Marshall lying on the ground and hitting his head against the ground, lying flat on the ground and not willing to believe that they had lost it. And then the unifier asserts itself in a new form. In 1980s, when the country was witnessing communal tensions and riots, there appeared posters in Mumbai with the pictures of Kapil Deo, Maninda Singh, Muhammad Azaruddin, and Roger Pini. And the picture's caption was, we can play together, we can live together. I wish it was, we shall play together, and we shall live together. I wish it remains, we shall play together, we shall live together. That is the spirit that cricket has taught us. One sec, just a sec, hold on. My video has got stuck. Just hold on for a second.
Who can forget these pictures? Who can forget these pictures? You know, am I audible to you? There was some technical glitch in between. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sure many of us, not you, but your parents, most of my, my dear students, your parents and your teachers will never forget these pictures. You will see it in a filmed film today and you will enjoy seeing someone else as Kapil Deo. But we saw him. The glee on his face said it all. I was walking in the streets of Lahore with Sayyid Kirmani when the Dosti series was going on. And I asked him, while having breaking bread together, I asked Sayyid Kirmani, Kiri bhai, sasaj batao, kaise jite? He started laughing, said, sasaj batao, kaise jita? Batai nahi kaise jite. बस ये था एक लड़का था कपिल देव उसको लगता था कि हम जरूर जीत जाएंगे पता नहीं कैसे लगता था दैट इज वेयर द डिफरेंस वाज मेड टू द नेशनल क्रिकेट सिनेरियो एंड इट हैड द न्यू व्हाट आई कॉल द फेविकॉल इफेक्ट द कॉस्ट ऑफ बीइंग कॉल्ड नेम्स बाय यूजिंग द टर्म फेविकॉल बट वी ऑल अंडरस्टैंड इट I thought there was no better adhesive than Fevicol effect, adhesive effect that could be described as the role of an adhesive. Now, it's very remarkable that Ram Guha says the institutions that kept us together are those requests of the British, the civil service, the army, the railways, and cricket. I'll ask you towards the end, which one of these you think has played the, or has performed the best in terms of the Fevicol effect. What a paradox of sorts. A divider becomes a unifier. A unifier unites the nation. Caste, creed, religion, caste, all kinds of disintegrating forces kept aside. The team India emerges as a symbol of national unity, representing a pluralistic nation, a group of people speaking different languages, following different religions from vastly different cultures, make one single team India to be cherished, rejoiced, and stored in the mind with an indelible imprint. And in 2011, The present coach of the Indian team, Rahul Dravid, said, and I quote, the Indian team represents more than ever before the country we come from, of people from vastly different cultures, who speak different languages, follow different religions, belong to different classes. This was Rahul Dravid in 2011. How right he was. And now, the mother of all battles. I don't feel very happy when I myself sometimes doing my commentary or analysis describe the India Pakistan match as the mother of all battles after three real wars the neighbors consolidate through cricket well there have been many mothers of battles in cricket also the ashes the traditional rivalry between Australia and England 
the rivalry between in South Africa and India, the rivalry between India and Australia of late, after Monkey Gate, even more intense. But this is one of its kind, battle without arms, mother of all battles, this era of neighborhood rivalry, brings in cricket diplomacy, makes it relevant, makes it extremely relevant. Not only during the time of Rajiv Gandhi's whole picture you see with Ziaul Haq, but also with Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the great visionary prime minister, who gives the call to the Indian team traveling to Pakistan along with 20,000 Indian followers. 20,000 Indian followers were given the visa to go to Pakistan. And yours truly, Malani Rav, was also there covering it for BBC. And I saw Pakistan through different eyes. I came to know that there, there existed not one Pakistan, but several Pakistans. The Pakistan of the so-called political rulers, the Pakistan of the army, the Pakistan of the common man. Awam ka Pakistan. जब मैंने दस जगह खाना खाया तो आठ जगह उन्होंने मुझसे पैसे नहीं लिए अरे आप हिंदुस्तान से आए आप हमारे भाई नो वंडर आई केप्ट कॉलिंग इट दोस्ती सीरीज एंड मेनी अदर्स लाइक मी आल्सो डिड एंड प्राइम मिनिस्टर वाजपेयी हैड गिवन द कॉल टू द इंडियन टीम डोंट जस्ट विन मैचेस बट आल्सो विन हार्ट्स आई विश द सेम स्पिरिट प्रिवेल्स and then comes 2007 the picture that i showed you right at the beginning of my presentation united they all stood in rains on the streets of mumbai and again i was traveling along with the team in an open bus next to it and to my utter shock and surprise i saw celebrities from their balconies waving at the team in jubilation and the pyari didi of the entire india may god give her long life lata mangeshkar was one of them waving at the crowds 2007 dhoni became a national figure even after pakistan series he had but this was that moment which changed the perception of the evolving cricket 2020 was here to stay the same 2020 where the experienced players like sachin tendulkar and saurav gangli opted out they did not play in the world cup the indian youngsters had won the world cup rohit sharma was a kid he was two and a half years old when sachin tendulkar had started playing he was there rp singh was there all these people were there nobody you know there are many of them who have been forgotten but i how can you forget joginder sharma how can you forget sri sant and that was another defining moment and then comes 2011 the country was fed up with a scam fatigue commonwealth games had got over scams after scams making the headlines india wins as a nation unified by cricket and there is this personal experience of mine which i want to narrate with your permission mr jha i was in the studios of dd doordarshan the match got over as jubilant and elated as anyone else of this country i was traveling back from the studios in copernica smart to my home in st stephen's college campus i got stuck at the ito crossing i was stuck for nearly four and a half hours the car could not move 
I have never seen a frenzy of this kind. Everyone was elated. People were dancing on the streets, congratulating each other. I saw the lady Sonia Gandhi standing from the rooftop of his of a car. And then I also saw many other celebrities walking here and there. They were all in the mood which had never been witnessed on the streets of Delhi in near this idea of Choraha. What was it? Why was this hysteria? I was scared. I saw girls running here and there with flags in their hand, coming and telling me, putting their face inside the, in, in, in the car and saying, Jeet gaya, Jeet gaya, India Jeet gaya. I was scared. Tomorrow's headlines will have many stories of unforeseen, unfortunate incidents. Maybe some mad people will bring a bad name for this country by indulging in hooliganism. Not a single incident of hooliganism was reported. India woke up to a fresh, jubilant, celebrated, long-lasting, joyous, charming, happy morning. The unifier was at its best. That is the cricket that we should be looking at. That is the cricket that we have inherited from the colonialists. And then I have brought you some pictures here or some scenes from that night which made headlines all over the world. It was a day millions celebrated. <laughs> After 28 years, India brought the Cricket World Cup home. And what a party it was. The city of Mumbai has come to a complete standstill as people are celebrating in any which way they can. People from all walks of life are here. And remember, this is just one city in India. There's similar scenes being played out in different parts of the country. Now, there was a new formula, a simple addition formula. Cricket is equal to national pride plus patriotic fervor. But inherent within the formula, innate within the formula, let me say that, was a danger sign also. Was an impending threat also. I'll tell you about that a little later. But who can say that it is not a game that connects 1.4 billion people today? Who can say that it is not a recipe for social harmony? However, we need to be very careful and cautious because the danger of being used to divide and create strife that was seen in the pre-1911 days, in the pre-1946 days, is again haunting us. And then let us not forget that if love for our cream can bring unity and fellowship, it can also provoke institutional and national bigotry. You have seen gunfires erupting after wins and losses. You have seen players' houses being attacked, both in our part of the world and our neighbor's part of the world. You have seen television screens being broken. You have seen television sets being burned. You have seen players getting trolled. You have seen and you are seeing social media being misused. The history of cricket needs to be read, to be rewritten. The history of cricket needs to be remembered for us to see that it remains only present through the brighter side that it represents. It is no longer just a game. 
Unfortunately for some, it has turned into a symbol of rivalry that can lead to the growth of rabid nationalism amongst the rivals. I just want to exercise a caution by citing this example. Football rivalry led to war between El Salvador and Honduras in 1969 when writing during the lead up to the 1970 Mexico World Cup led to a hundred hour armed invasion of Honduras by the Salvadorian army. It is recorded in history. It is not Malani writing history or trying to rewrite history. But when the Bharatiya team is on the ground, and when the Tiranga is on the ground, they say that the Rome is standing up. And when the Bharatiya Balle has a boundary or a six, so you can't say that the happiness is in your heart. और जब टीम जीतती है चाहे कोई भी कप्तान हो हमारे देश में हिंदू भी कप्तान रहे हैं पारसी भी कप्तान रहे हैं क्रिश्चियंस भी कप्तान रहे हैं मुसलमान भी कप्तान रहे हैं पर कभी किसी ने यह नहीं कहा कि मेरा मजहब देश से ऊपर है हम एक जुट हमेशा हुए हैं टीम खेली है तो भारत के लिए खेली है किसी एक मजहब के लिए कभी नहीं So, the heart and the soul of this great nation are bound together in the cricket ground. And I want to end by a quote of Ashish Nandi, a very famous quote, often repeated. Cricket is an Indian game, accidentally discovered by the British cricket. It defies my own introduction. But that is what it is today. Cricket as a bonding factor, stronger than Bollywood and any other additive. Do you agree? Tell me in the question answer session. Thanks once again. Thanks so much for that patient hearing. I hope I have tried to come to the expectations of this society and that my colleagues and teachers and principal, Mark, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर जो आपने इतने महत्वपूर्ण विषय पर प्रकाश डाला यह हम सभी के लिए वास्तव में शिक्षाप्रद और आनंददायक रहा और एक बार फिर से मैं सभी से यही कहना चाहूंगा कि यह हम सबकी खुशकिस्मती है कि डॉक्टर मल्लय नीरज सर आज हम सभी के बीच उपस्थित हैं अब मैं यहाँ उपस्थित सभी से यह आग्रह करना चाहूंगा की वह यदि उनके पास इस विषय से संबंधित कोई प्रश्न है तो वे चैट बॉक्स में लिखकर या एक एक करके अपने माइक को अनम्यूट करके पूछ सकते हैं गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर मैं नेमी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू फॉर सच एन इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशन इट वाज रियली नाइस एंड आई कुंट लाइक बी डिस्ट्रैक्टेड फॉर जस्ट इवन ए सिंगल सेकंड आई लिसन टू ईच एंड एवरीथिंग सो सर आई गॉट लाइक आई वो थ्री इयर्स बैक आई वाज प्लेइंग इन मुंबई when i was representing haryana in junior cricket so sir there we visited few grounds sir like parsi gymkhana ground was there bombay gymkhana ground was there there i could see that in the dressing rooms uh, some pictures were there uh, hanged on the walls so sir at that time i couldn't understand that what is the history of uh, this place because no one told us about that sir when but I, when i was listening to you i learned about the quadrangular series which was there between different people teams of different communities were there so sir i thought that sir it were, you are the, like a great person to know more about the history of those grounds or how like relevant is it to talk about those grounds also because these days when the younger generation goes there we just think about our match we just see the pictures on the wall we ignore them i also ignore that thing but today like when you talked about that thing suddenly i realized that yes i have been on those grounds but sir i was never aware of the history uh, of those grounds or those tournaments which used to take place so sir can you please tell something about those grounds yes. uh, first of all i am really very happy to see a player you say you are there to play i say you a player listening to me that's great see most of these grounds which were named initially they were named after the people who established it right some of these names were changed later in due course and some of these names remained the way they are 
changing the names are good and bad in their own ways. I don't want to get into that debate because you know how, how kind of uh, fearsome such debates get these days when you talk about name changes and changing names of grounds grounds and that to one cricket ground led to a lot of problems you know on the national level so i don't want to get into that political debate anymore but let me tell you that we have to see some of these names of the grounds as the historical pillars landmarks of facts and realities not myths and mythologies which we must respect because unless we learn to respect our tradition we cannot freely consciously independently analyze those traditions and try and talk about it the way i have done for example the divide and rule policy if it is being reinforced by institutionalization of caste and class and religious and ethnic identities, we as historians have to see them as part of a process which may or may not survive for long, but we cannot say that they did not survive at one point of time. Objectivity in history will remain a myth because there are no full stops in history. And hence, let us try and look at history the way it is presented before us, rather than trying to change history without reading it. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, a question or I have. The laws of cricket always give the benefit of doubt to the batsman. Why is it so? <laughs> well, that's a good question. But, uh, but the thing is that now you have the DRS system, right? Uh, because of all these questions which were raised and raised by none others than us, the journalists who used to cover cricket, I remember whenever, for example, your team loses and you know that there was a wrong decision, we used to make a hue and cry in the press conference uh, and, and then the DRS system was introduced. With the DRS system being introduced, you see, the thing is, if you have played cricket, you will realize what is the position in which the batsman is when he's facing a 150 kilometer per hour ball, right? People like Sachin Dendulkar had hawk size. Very few people have so those hawk size, you know. So Sunil Gavaskar played without the helmet. But when you are standing in front of the bowler who is coming with a defined, announced intent to get you back to the pavilion, and you are withstanding that onslaught standing there. And if something happens, there's, a, there's no nick, there's no sound, and the wicket, wicket keeper is making an appeal, and the cameras also fail and say, the umpire's call, then the umpire is naturally inclined, you are right to some extent, to go in the favor of the batsman, right? Well, there was a time when people used to say that the batsmen win matches. Now, they say the bowlers win you matches, right? But the end game is, the end, the, 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 the be all and end all of everything is that the captain goes and gives a pat on the back of the bowler and says, Are kya yaar? ball me out ho jayega, dekhna tu. Bach kya to kya Agar itna hi perfect decision making ho jaya mere dost, तो फिर क्रिकेट का मजा किरकिरा हो जाएगा सब कुछ मैकेनिकल हो जाए तो हम तो अब मैं देखता हूं मेरा लड़का कई बार क्रिकेट का कोई सॉफ्टवेयर है उसको इंस्टॉल करके भर दिन खेलता रहता है फिर कौन जाएगा देखने मैच एनी अदर क्वेश्चंस या गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून माय नेम इज आकाश एंड आई एम 
I'm kind of, uh, you know, fascinated by, uh, you know, ending this session because somehow I feel that sports and history is, is somewhat still a very kind of field that requires more and more, uh, you know, research and details to it. So something that kind of struck my mind that whenever I tell my students about Spiro Shakotla, they'll always take it as ground. And somewhat my interest is also into speciality. Uh, rather than thinking about monuments as Firo Shah Kotla, they'll take Delhi's ground as Firo Shah Kotla Stadium for that matter. So what would you say that, uh, of course, cricket as a unifier, but also while uh, we get to look at newer stadiums coming up and they're having their own regional finesse and details coming into them, if you think about Dharamshala and how beautifully it has been designed like a monastery. And for that matter, how layering of history has been seen all this time, that Feroz Shah Kotla, the palace becoming a stadium and becoming more famous than the Kotla Palace in itself. So what would you say about that, that how, you know, regionality in their own fashion is also kind of available in the stadiums that come up in, come up in different regions? And specifically, as we see IPL and other things going up, this has become uh, a kind of a prominent aspect to be seen. And another question that I have is, somewhat about related to the present day culture, because I think that it is somewhat a conversation between the past and the present related to cricket, is that the kind of uh, reception that a film or the movie like 83 has got in the present day, because I uh, came to know that even the uh, winners of that World Cup, um, you know, kind of uh, told uh, the uh, director and the producers of this film that we had got a very frugal celebration, a frugal kind of reception back in the day when we were playing. So the frugal celebration this time as well, of course, because of COVID and all. So what would you say about this, that uh, they, they are kind of trying to connect this kind of frugality still into the present? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Let me, let me begin by answering your first question first. Right. Uh, Symbol making is an innate urge of human mind. Ever since humanity has existed in prehistoric times, we have seen people coming up with symbols. And symbolisms and insignias are as much a part of human life as anything else. For example, if you were to ask a youth following cricket today about Firoz Shah Kotla, the only name that he can remember is Anil Kumble, who took 10 wickets against uh, the opponents there on Firoz Shah Kotla ground. If you ask me who teaches Delhi through the ages to the generic elective quest, uh, students that you also must be knowing, then Feroz Shah Kotla would come to my mind as one of the seven capitals which was established later. However, when symbols of historical presence are connected with modern day symbols of history in the making, the relevance of such symbols increases manifold, right? So if people can say, what is there in a name, right? What is there in a name? Now, if there was nothing in the name, why would somebody call one airport Charan Singh Airport, another airport Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminal, a third one Jayaprakash Narayan Airport, a fourth one Indira Gandhi International Airport? So history, is a continuous ongoing process that you and I as teachers of history have not only understood, learned, but also experienced, right? I started teaching at the age of 21 and a half, and I have taught for more than 36 years now, right? I have seen history undergoing a great transformation, but historical symbols, insignias, etc., have remained intact at the back of my mind with the connotations changing from time to time when we apply the same to the present context. For example, if you were speaking to a footballer, he would talk about Duran Cup and Feroz Shah Kotla. He would not be talking about the, the, the cricket match. So it depends on the way we see those symbols leaving a permanent imprint and indelible impact on us and we try and relate, and the relevance becomes more magnified when we try and put it in the context of the present. Because history is not only an image of the past, it is a mirror of the future. 
which is seen from the present where you were standing and trying to adjust the mirror, the rear view mirror to see that nobody overshoots you in a way in which your left side gets damaged, right? And the right remains intact and left and right, one not intended, right? So that is one thing. Second thing that you asked, second question that you asked about, uh, what was it? Um, Mm. It was about the frugality, sir. Ah, the, the frugality. frugality. The frugality. Uh, you know what? Cricket has undergone a great degree of commercialization. It goes without saying. Today, ICC cannot afford to do anything if the BCCI doesn't want it to do. You know, because one great man called Jagmohan Dalmia showed to the entire world how cricket can be a money spinner. After the trio and the four, the, the, the four great spinners of India, the only one who told the world how to spin money out of cricket was Jagmohan Dalmia and those who followed him to some extent in Kepi Salve also who realized that there was a potential. So with cricket as a spinner, money spinner, the priorities of BCCI were very well defined. Game, player. And the players of the times in the post-1983 days, especially in the 21st century, were so well played and with the media and social media, both playing such a great role in highlighting cricket the way it did. I told you about the important turning points like 1982 when color television came, when people started associating themselves with the team playing and the players playing there. With the money power becoming very important, which was how the broadcasting rights were sold and are still being sold. These players were looked after very well. Unfortunately, the former stars, the stars of yesterday, yesterday, yesteryears were not looked after so well. The daily fees was 150 odd rupees. So they remained frugal all through their life in terms of their own needs being met after they had stopped playing. Now, BCCI did a good thing a few years back. They started paying a handsome pension package in recognition of the services offered by former players to this. But whenever I have spoken to some of these players, you know, they have had this kind of uh, uh, you know, I, I should not be calling it, uh, what should I, I don't know what, how to describe it, that slightly, a slight kind of a sense of unfulfillment where they feel that they were, and, and these were, these, this is probably not the fault of any individual organization. The times had changed, right? Uh, broadcasting rights had brought in a lot of money. Cricket had become very popular uh, when it has become very popular, which it was not earlier. So that kind of a money which they want to see will never come back to their own lives and their lives will, even if when they are recognized and offered all other recognitions, including a 10 lakh per year package or whatever it is, they will always keep thinking that when we were playing, it was no longer the same. And I don't think that they're repenting over it. It's just a matter of fact, it's a bitter pill that you have to swallow. There's no way out. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, there is another question uh, from our Pallavi ma'am. Which was the song associated with Sneel Gavaskar? Which was a song. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will send you, I will send you the song. You can listen to it. I wish I had played it for you. I have it somewhere in my store. There was a man called Gavaskar. You know, that was the title of the song. If you do a search on YouTube, you'll get it. It was, it was uh, sung in the rap tradition in West Indies. When Gavaskar created Havoc, they, they, they created this song and they all used to sing and dance with the song on that he was a man who could not be bold, who could not be removed from the wicket. 
right? I'll send it to you. You can make Pallavi ma'am listen to it. <laughs> but it is available on YouTube. You do a search and you will find it. Sir, uh, a there's one, question here. There's one more hand being raised I can see on the screen. Somar Pran, uh, Pran Saikia. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, my question was basically on the social implication of cricket. Basically, I wanted to know as someone who has lived through the time, uh, particularly after India won its first uh, test series abroad in 19, against England in 1971. Uh, so how has cricket impacted our confidence as a nation? Well, this is what I was hinting at. I told you that 1971 was a turning point and after that cricket became a part of Indian household, Indian lives, Indian lifestyles, where boundaries were removed to a large extent, where people started looking at their players as symbols of their own family and nation and household, the extended family as a nation and their household, starting from the household to the nation. So the whole a uh, perspective of cricket changed after that. It was, it was a grand victory, which is still a sense of unity and binding together for the Indian team, uh, sorry, for the Indian population. And this was taken to its logical conclusion in 1983, when India wins the World Cup. So all these uh, boundaries and iron curtains which were either being raised or tried to be raised being raised by others they were all vanishing gradually and slowly so cricket became a household mode of entertainment mode of elation mode of enjoyment and that is how it was very very important okay sir thank you very much yeah. Can I request uh, Jay Pratap to also read a few messages which are not in terms of uh, not like questions, but uh, some messages uh, about... No, no, I'm, I'm happy to stay here for some time. Yeah. It's not an issue, but... Uh, but uh, I mean, I, we, have, uh, we also have some messages on the chat box, which are not strictly uh, like questions, but they can still be read out. Jay, yeah. Jay, you can read out. I mean, I... I so Dr. Anubam Sanniji is a very nice session. Thank you, Dr. Neera, for enlightening and informative lecture. Congratulations, History Department, for organizing such an event. Uh, Ankur Majumdar Ji ki tarf se, sir, uh, aya hai ki. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, uh, that's all. All, all are congratulating us, sir. Very interesting sessions. Thank you. Thank you so much. अभी दो चार मिनट है अगर कोई सवाल है तो ले लें दो चार मिनट है अभी एक एक सवाल मलेजी मेरे तरफ से था जरूर जरूर and you have talked about growing commercialization of the game also yes and you have also said that when the IPL first came and you were a bit reluctant to accept its novelty but nowadays now you have changed your perspective towards the IPL because it has allowed many uncapped players to figure in in the national games. Now, looking at the amount of money that the IPL has brought to the game and uh, looking at the shorter formats of the game becoming more popular, do you think uh, that the test cricket, the five days cricket, uh, will slowly become less popular or die down eventually, say, maybe in say, four decades or five decades of time? Mm -hmm. Or people, life becoming faster or more money being coming from the smaller formats of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, Bhuvanji, this question has been looming large over cricket lovers, especially the lovers of the traditional form of cricket, that is test cricket, for quite some time. Ever since the shorter, ever since the shorter formats were introduced, and especially the 2020 cricket and later the, uh, from, you know, the transition from test cricket to pajama cricket to IPL type of cricket, this night 2020, cricket it has been such where you know what has what we have observed over a long period of time is a gradual kind of negation of the intimidating power of the smaller entertaining format 
because the purists still exist in large numbers not only the the viewers and the enjoyers of cricket and the lovers of cricket but also you know those who play cricket for example if you are allowed to play in a 2020 match and you have made centuries in 2020 match and you have never played a test match it is your lifetime ambition to start playing the test match at some point of time in your life so that you get recognized as one of the best so that kind of a hallmark which was introduced or which has remained valid for cricket in form of your ability to play test cricket has not been diluted yet so being an optimist that i am i feel that you may have a 10 over cricket at some point of time but the test cricket will not die out though the icc has been making some experiments for example the day and night test matches have been introduced where more and more people will be able to watch matches what concerns me more is the way the pitches are made and the test matches now are finishing in 3 days or 4 days time that is something that is a matter of big concern for me because when the grounds are made in a way in which you have 14 or 15 or 20 wickets falling in one day and the very third day the match gets finished then the whole purpose of having a long format to test the relative abilities of the team in test matches that itself is being questioned so that is one thing that icc will have to take care of will need to pay attention to and this i have said in international forums also uh, for us also that it needs to be looked into तो सर सर आगे वेबिनार के समापन की ओर चलते हैं सर फिर ठीक मैं एक बार फिर से हमारे अतिथि डॉक्टर मलय नीरज सर का सहृदय आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं जो आपने हमारे श्रोताओं की जिज्ञासाओं उनके मन में उठ रहे तरह तरह के प्रश्नों का भली भांति उत्तर दिया अब हम इस वेबिनार के समापन की ओर बढ़ते हुए मैं हमारे टीचर इंचार्ज डॉक्टर भुवन कुमार झा सर से यह अनुरोध करता हूँ कि वे सभी श्रोतागणों के इतने उत्सव पूर्वक भागीदार के लिए धन्यवाद दें और इस वेबिनार का समापन करें इसी के साथ जयप्रदा आप सभी के प्यारे जयप्रदाप को जयप्रदाप का आपको सादर प्रणाम और मैं यही देता हूं अपनी वाणी को पूर्ण विराम थैंक यू जयप्रताप राठौर जी फॉर एंकरिंग द इंटायर शो और बहुत अच्छे से बहुत स्मार्टली बहुत कॉन्फिडेंस के साथ आपने संचालन किया एंड थैंक यू धीरेन्द्र नाथ देशमुख इज द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ आवर हिस्ट्री सोसाइटी for coordinating the entire effort and for all being always available to take up new challenges there are other office bearers uh, uh, shakchi who also spoke today this uh, amisha anjali shelly and they have been doing wonderful work and or our colleagues uh, from the history department have joined today's show and have also asked very beautiful questions there are some colleagues from uh, outside the college also that are like dr nirja singh uh, dr ritu bhagat dr snehlata and others who have joined from other colleges a large number of students from the history department of the college from other departments of the college and from other colleges have also joined and at certain time it seemed uh, i could see the number of participants going as high as up to 160 and uh, i am also very thankful to our principal professor nirmal jindal for uh, being around the biggest uh, gain uh, from today's lecture today's talk is that the students of history in this college and those who have participated cannot appreciate the big impact which sports has on our past and present ek taraf हम ये देख सकते हैं कि जो 19वीं शताब्दी में क्रिकेट यहाँ इंट्रोड्यूस हो रहा है और 21वीं शताब्दी में मतलब तीन शताब्दियों के अंतराल में क्रिकेट का स्वरूप बदला है लेकिन जोड़ने का काम जैसे डॉक्टर मल निगम ने कहा कि एंड ही हैज यूज्ड दिस टर्म फेबिकॉल एंड नो बेटर टर्म टू यूज देन दिस कि एक बार चिपक जाए तो खट उठ निकाह खोल नहीं सकते तो जो बाइंडिंग फैक्टर का काम किया है वो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है किस इतने अच्छे ढंग से सर आपने हम लोगों को ये बताया 
and giving glimpses from the very past or 200 300 saal pehle se jaise colonies mein cricket ki shuruaat ho rahi hai aur kis prakar se hindustan mein princes ke dwara isko pehle patronize kiya gaya फिर कहीं पर वो डिवाइड करने का काम करता था कास्ट कम्युनिटी में कहीं पर फिर यूनिफाई काम करने का काम भी करता था और जैसे आपने बाद में इसको कंक्लूड किया कि किस प्रकार इंग्लैंड में तो चलो ठीक है क्रिकेट शुरू हुआ लेकिन लगता है कि हिंदुस्तान की ही ये कहीं ये पारंपरिक गेम जैसा लग रहा है इस हिसाब से इस भावनात्मक रूप से लोग जुड़े हुए एंड हाउ ब्यूटिफुली यू हैव ट्रेवल्ड द इंटायर स्पैन ऑफ हंड्रेड ईयर्स एंड signifying giving due importance to significant milestones and what a better tribute to lala amarnath ji the captain of cricket team in the independent india the first captain aur kaise sunil gavaskar ne ka jo kuch ka jo karishma tha fir kapil dev par aaye aur dhoni hai aur tendulkar hai और कई सारे प्लेयर्स के बारे में तो एक एक बड़ा चित्र एक बड़ा ग्राफ सबके मन में आ गया और इससे यह भी पता चलेगा कल को जब क्रिकेट देखेंगे और जब भीड़ को देखेंगे बाहर जब हम जीतते हैं या मायूसी को देखेंगे जब हम हार रहे हैं तो उसको आपको उस आपके लेक्चर को हमेशा याद करेंगे उस जो क्राउड का जो भीड़ में जो उत्साह है उसको एक दूसरे ढंग से समीक्षा करने की विश्लेषित करने की कोशिश करेंगे और आपने बहुत कम समय पर इस महीने के शुरू में हमने इनसे बात की एंड ही एग्रीड और बहुत अच्छे स्लाइड्स भी तैयार किए और लाला अमरनाथ जी के बेटे का इंटरव्यू भी हमारे लिए इन्होंने उसमें लाया उनके क्लिप्स को लाया और इसमें बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो चीजें आपने बताई इसमें बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो हमने कभी ना सुना था ना पढ़ा था तो एज ए ग्लिम्स ऑल्सो यदि थोड़े थोड़े टुकड़ों में भी उसको बांटते हैं तो बहुत सारी चीजें हमारे दिमाग में हम लोगों के दिमाग में अब नई तरह की बातें आ गई क्रिकेट को देखने का जब किस तरह से सोसाइटी को इम्पैक्ट करता है एंड ऑल्सो द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स दैट वेर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड ड्यूरिंग द कोलोनियल पीरियड और आपने बहुत अच्छा बताया कि शुरू में इसको डिवाइड करने के लिए शुरू किया गया but ultimately the game has ended as an as a as an adhesive as a unifier for for the country sir we are extremely thankful to you shashwat the history society satwati college the principal the teachers of the department the office bearers our colleagues we are extremely elated to have you here and have having heard you for for a substantially good time और आप हमेशा कहते रहे थे कि समय कम हो रहा है तो हम लोगों को हमेशा इच्छा थी कि नहीं ये और जितना लंबा चले उतना अच्छा रहे क्योंकि इतना आनंद में हम लोग डूबे हुए थे आपके लेक्चर में कि समय का अंदाजा भी नहीं चल रहा था तो सर बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ इस कार्यक्रम का समापन किया जाए और जब कॉलेज खुलेगा तो वी विल लुक फॉरवर्ड टू हैव एन ऑफलाइन सेशन विथ प्रोफेसर मलन धीरम इसी विषय पर या इससे मिलते जुलते विषय पर क्योंकि यहाँ यहाँ तो सिर्फ क्रिकेट की इन्होंने बात की है लेकिन यदि आप टीवी पर या रेडियो पर सुनेंगे तो बहुत सारे स्पोर्ट्स की ये बात करते हैं <laughs> ऐसा तो ऐसा आपको न लगे कि सिर्फ ये क्रिकेट के समीक्षक हैं ये एथलेटिक्स के भी समीक्षक हैं और ये बॉक्सिंग की भी समीक्षा करते हैं रेसलिंग की भी समीक्षा करते हैं और जितना जितनी खूबी से इन्होंने अंग्रेजी बोली उतनी ही उतने ही बढ़िया ढंग से हिंदी भी बोली तो यदि हमें कम्युनिकेशन स्किल पर भी कोई सेमिनार करना हो सेशन करना हो तो उसमें भी हम आपको बुला सकते हैं। सॉरी मैं सर सर मैं एक अंत में सिर्फ आपके छात्र यहाँ हैं जो उनको सिर्फ एक संदेश जो मैंने अंत में दिया था वो ये था कि ये बंधन जो है ये अनेकता में एकता का परिचायक है ये एक सकारात्मक सोच का परिचायक है आप देश की आने वाली पीढ़ी हैं इस धरोहर को आपको सजो कर रखना है कहीं ऐसा ना हो 
कि ये बंधन प्रतिद्वंदिता का वो भयानक भयावह रूप ले ले जहां बंदूकों की लड़ाई से भी ज्यादा घातक मैदान पर खेले जाने वाली लड़ाई हो जाए और फिर वो बंदूकों की लड़ाई का रूप ले ले जो मैंने अल सलवाडोर और हंडोरास का उदाहरण आपको दिया था तो मेरा ये संदेश है आप सबके लिए क्योंकि हमारे जीवन की गोधूली वेला नजर आने लगी है आपके जीवन का सूर्योदय तो भी लालिमा में ही है इसलिए आप सब से मेरा ये अनुरोध है क्रिकेट का मजा लीजिए क्रिकेट को जोड़ने का काम कीजिए क्रिकेट से जोड़ने का काम कीजिए क्रिकेट को किसी भी घृणा प्रतिशोध का माध्यम मत बनने दीजिए तभी जो हमारे सांस्कृतिक हमारे जो धरोहर हैं उनमें हमारा योगदान सार्थक होगा ये मेरी आपसे अपेक्षा है विनती है मेरा सादर अनुरोध है कि क्रिकेट को एक खेल और एक मजबूत धागे से बांधने वाले खेल के रूप में इसको देखें वो मंजे वाले धागे की तरह नहीं जो दूसरे की पतंग काटने में लगा रहता है जोड़ने का काम करिए क्रिकेट को इस्तेमाल करिए काटने के लिए तो बहुत लोग बड़े हैं दुनिया काट रही है चारों ओर हमारे कट रहे हैं माफ करिएगा मैं भुवन जी बीच में बोल पड़ा क्योंकि ये संदेश भी छात्रों के बीच युवाओं के बीच जाना जरूरी था इसी संदेश के साथ कि क्रिकेट देश को जोड़ने का काम कर रहा है इसको इसी रूप में हम देखें और जब समय और अनुरूप होगा जब ऑफलाइन क्लासेस शुरू होंगे तो हम हम लोग कोशिश करेंगे कि फिर से डॉक्टर नीरव हमारे पास आए और किसी और अन्य विषय पे स्पोर्ट्स के किसी और क्षेत्र पे और इन जनरल हिस्ट्री पे हिस्ट्री के किसी विषय पे कम्युनिकेशन पे हिस्ट्री और हिस्ट्री लिखने के लिए कम्युनिकेशन की कितनी आवश्यकता होती है कितना महत्व है इन सारे विषयों पे बात करने के लिए हम आपसे हमारी अपेक्षा रहेगी कि आप आए हमारे पास और जब ऑफलाइन मिलते हैं तो ज्यादा अच्छे से भी मतलब एक दूसरे ढंग से संवाद होने की संभावना होती है thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you so very much, much. Thank look you. forward to seeing you and, again thank you and, and we will post this uh, video on youtube also so others can also see it who have missed today that's very kind thank you very much thanks thank you thank thanks you. everybody thanks to